And I, I really applaud them and I want to encourage them. And I want to encourage other people to build small like that, kind of back to the roots that this whole thing started with. You don't need that McMansion tiny house, you know, that 36 footer that, you know, sleeps a family of four. Welcome to the Tiny House Lifestyle Podcast, the show where you learn how to plan, build, and live the tiny lifestyle. I'm your host, Ethan Waldman, and my guest today is Michael Jansen. Michael Jansen is a legend in the tiny house world, having started his website, tinyhousedesign.com, in 2007, and just continuing to work as a prolific designer pretty much since then. Michael has put a lot of different plans out into the world, and I have no doubt that there are many, many tiny houses that are built either directly from his designs or were inspired by them. On today's show, Michael stopped by to talk about the second edition of his book, Tiny House Floor Plans. It now contains over 350 tiny house floor plans, and it's just a really cool book to look through. The houses are arranged from small to large, and if you are in the design or planning process, it's a really cool resource to just get some ideas about how you can lay out a tiny house. Our conversation is wide-ranging from things in the tiny house design world that Michael thinks are maybe not serving tiny houses, things that Michael is looking forward to, and more. I do hope you stick around. The summer can be a little bit too much fun, full of family, friends, distractions, holidays, but for those of us who are planning and building tiny houses, what we really need is motivation, inspiration, and accountability to get our tiny houses done. That's exactly why I started Tiny House Engage. Tiny House Engage is an online community that brings together tiny dreamers, builders, and dwellers to inspire and support each other as we build tiny together. In Tiny House Engage, people are celebrating wins and navigating our challenges together. Because let's face it, planning, building, and living tiny can be lonely. Tiny House Engage is a 24-7 online community designed to connect you with fellow tiny housers, get your questions answered, get inspired, feel that accountability, and progress towards your goal of living tiny. Tiny House Engage opens just one week per month, and right now, Tiny House Engage is open until Tuesday, so there's just a couple of days left. And so I'd like to invite you personally to join. There is way more about Tiny House Engage than I can fit into this one short spot here, but you can learn all about it at thetinyhouse.net slash engage. Again, that's thetinyhouse.net slash engage. I really look forward to connecting with you in Tiny House Engage and watching as your tiny house dreams progress into tiny house reality. Again, that website is thetinyhouse.net slash engage. All right, I am here with Michael Jansen. Michael Jansen has been designing tiny houses and writing about the tiny house movement since 2007. He used to blog at tinyhousedesign.com, where he shared tiny house concepts and news and offered tiny house plans for sale. Today, Michael blogs at michaeljansen.com, where you can find all the things he designs. He just published the second edition of his book, Tiny House Floor Plans, which was originally published in 2012. The new edition has over 350 brand new floor plans, up from 220 in the first edition. Michael Jansen, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ethan. So I was hoping um, to just uh, ask you to to catch us up. You know, I think you were an early guest on on the podcast. Um, that's that must have been in 2018 at this point. Um, so I know that in that intervening time, uh, you decided to close down uh, tinyhousedesign.com, correct? That's right. Um curious uh why why you know it i think you see a lot of creators get a certain level of burnout and that's part of it part of the burnout was actually caused by so i was posting a bunch of ideas and things there and i started seeing Mm. them for sale by other people on amazon and other places and Uh. like some of the free plans that i offered and even some of the paid plans 
and and that that was very discouraging. And blogging blogging just got more complicated. Like uh, a lot of laws have been passed in the past few years, mm-hmm. and I think it just made it much more difficult to uh, to do that. And uh, and so I, I decided to just change directions uh, yeah. and do some other things. But I've I, I I constantly draw since I was a kid. I I like to draw, and so I've been drawing this whole time. Uh, some tiny houses and other things too. Mm-hmm. Like uh, it's always some something on the smaller end. I, I would never design big things, but but like solar adobes and and stuff like that. And so I've started posting those at my michaeljansen.com blog. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also got back to uh, I had started a project to redraw the original book mm-hmm. so a lot of people might recognize that and <clears throat> because they probably they may have it yeah and and this is just for size comparison yeah so most most people won't see this but the original book is like a you know is eight six by nine is six by nine and the new book is this is probably what eight by eleven eight and a half by eleven eight yeah. and a half by eleven yeah yeah and it's quite a bit thicker and has tons more design but i'd started the project a while back, like I said, got kind of burned out on it, but then got back into it last fall yeah. and, um, and really started working on it, took a little pause around the holidays and then got back into it and finally finished it up. But, um, what, what the old book didn't have, well, the old book was, was sort of a snapshot in time of yeah, what a tiny house was back then, which was much simpler than they are now. They're, they're, they're a lot it, with all the different people building all the different houses, all these, yep. all this creative energy, we see all sorts of great ideas that are emerging. And so when I redrew it, I, I completely redrew every floor plan and uh, started from scratch really. Wow. And incorporating a lot of things that, uh, that, that we see in tiny houses today. Like for example, most of the houses in the first uh, edition don't have uh, stairs because that was kind of a novelty back then. And today, that's a norm. You know, most tiny houses have stairs, and so in in the new book, most most of the floor plans have stairs. Yeah, I think that that's an interesting one to hit on because I think in the tiny house movement, and probably in most new movements that are are kind of people are doing a similar thing, and it's like, well, why did I put a loft with a ladder in my tiny house it's just that's because that's how every tiny house that i had seen did it and i think that there are some ideas that have been maybe shed over the years that uh didn't serve as many people as they could have or just better ideas have come along maybe the maybe the loft ladder is one of them exactly like like remember back in the beginning the, the first tiny house most of us were were initiated with was Jay Schaefer's tiny house. Right. And it, you know, it was uh, eight by 16 and, uh, you know, had a, a almost a 12, 12 pitch, if not a 12, 12 pitch. So it had that yeah. kind of classical pitch and, and the loft was ran the full length of the house and it had a little tiny trap door to get up into the loft. Right. And the kitchen was in the back next to the, and there was a little, t- you know, a little portable ladder that he used to get up into the loft. Yeah. You know, but that was the house that was on Oprah. That was the house that was, you know, on all the TV shows. That was, that's what, and, and that iconic tiny house, I think, got burned into so many brains back then that we didn't, you know, that's what we wanted. That's what we right. thought right. was amazing. Uh, his water system was a, you know, a couple of pipes and a, and a uh, uh, a little water tank in his loft, and then he had a little frock thing on the counter for uh, drinking water for the kitchen sink. So I mean, it was very simple, and uh, and and uh, you know, a lot. Of, uh, I, I'm still very nostalgic for those very simple tiny houses that cost very little money to build, right? Because I think that really encapsulated the spirit of what the tiny house movement is all about. And today we have, you know it's really matured into there's still people out there building small houses like that mm-hmm. but uh but i think most of the professionally built houses 
uh, and the very popular houses are much, much bigger, much longer. Quite a bit bigger, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and much more expensive. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we've certainly as we've crossed into the professionally built tiny house as more of a norm than a DIY build. Um, you know, we've crossed a threshold where a new tiny house build, you might be able to go to a many handful of cities, particularly in, you know, Midwestern cities in the United States where you couldn't buy a single family home for less. The, the, like, it's like the lines have crossed and tiny houses are exactly more expensive than bigger houses in some cases. In some cases. Yeah. So when you look at RVs, it's the same way. I mean, you can buy you know, $300,000 RVs, which, you know, many think is insane. I would count myself among them. <laughs> but, right. but, uh, but when you think about, you know, the engineering that it took to actually make something so large and heavy travel down a highway, you know, you kind of cut them a little slack for, for yeah. the price tag, even though it's, sure. you know, it's more than a regular house in many cities. Yeah. Yeah. But, and I think that's true of tiny houses too. But then you also look at, uh, and I'm not trying to defend expensive tiny houses, but you, you look at the quality of the thing. And this was something mm -hmm. that Bay brought originally too, is the quality of the things in the home when it was so small had to be really good. Mm -hmm. It had to be, you know, it really, because you spent so much close time with it. You know, when a house is bigger, you know, it's not as, little thing little details like the quality of something in your home is less noticeable but when you're when you're living in a tiny space it's you know the quality goes up and and the yeah. and the budget can take it because you don't have to buy much of that so like if you're buying a really quality wood floor for instance you're, you're buying yeah. a room's worth of it or two rooms worth of it versus yeah. a whole house you know normal house uh, worth of it so it was it's more affordable absolutely I'm curious. So, um, you were kind enough to send me the book, which, um, as I've already said, it, it's quite a tome. It's, it's impressive. Like 350 tiny house designs makes for a thick book. And I think the first thing that I did is I just, I like flipped through it quickly and just saw the, the floor plans like grow almost like a flip book because they're, they're organized from smallest to largest, which I just, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I'm curious, like, how did you approach this project? Like, did you say, okay, I need to have a certain number of houses at 30 feet and a certain number at 32, a certain number at 34? Did you, like, did you go in order? Or did, like, how did you approach it as a creative work? So I started, so I had, I, I had the model of the original book okay. as a baseline. And that book is ordered by smallest to biggest. Uh -huh. And this time, though, I wanted to keep it all tiny houses on wheels. I wanted them to all be legally towable in size without getting special permits and things. So that meant limiting the width, limiting the length. Right. So they're all eight. They're they're all eight by. Yeah, eight and a half. Yeah, full width. You know, fender to yeah. fender, eight and a half. So the house is about eight. And then the the longest ones are thirty six feet. Right. Right. And so and in a 36 foot house, and that's the house length, not the full trailer length, mm -hmm. with a dually crew cab in front of it is just under 60 feet, which is the which is the longest you can go typically in, in the US wow. without getting a special oversized permit. And the width, a lot of people are building houses that are that are 10 or just under 10 and, and just under 12 feet wide right. now too. Right. Because you can get a, a special permit to, to move those from place to place, so an oversized permit. Mm -hmm. And the under 10 foot are easy, pretty easy to get, uh, relatively speaking. So, so people are going that route and getting bigger tiny houses. But I wanted to keep the book, but I think of those as park models. I think when you start getting into that size, you start, Sure, it's a tiny house, but it's it's not a tiny house on wheels by, I think, the standard that we all think of. So I kept them all under eight and a half foot wide. Mm -hmm. And then I did, on a spreadsheet, lay out how many, I, I knew how many 
of course, houses I had in the first book, and this had to be bigger. And I wanted to focus on more on the larger sizes. So the spreadsheet just helped me visualize how, how many of each size was I going to draw. And so the bigger, bigger ones, I think there are 48 of each of the bigger sizes, four biggest sizes. Mm -hmm. and, and so most of the book is 24 feet and bigger. But I, I wanted to keep some of the really, really small ones in there, like the, and I, the smallest is 12 feet, mm -hmm. because there are so many people out there still who are building small, tiny homes under 24 feet. And, and I, I really applaud them, and I want to encourage them. And I want to encourage other people to build small like that and, and kind of back to the roots that this whole thing started with. You don't need that McMansion tiny house, you know, that 36 footer that, you know, sleeps mm -hmm. a family of four. If, if you don't need that, you know, if, if all you need is a place for you to live while you're in school or, or traveling, you know, it, it's a whole lot easier to tow a small tiny house than it is a big tiny house. Certainly. As you know, and and you need less truck and all that. So I wonder if the shift has come also because so many tiny houses are not moved or are moved only once or twice. Yeah. That, you know, prioritizing the mobility has become less important to some. Yeah, I, I think you're right. But even in the beginning, I, I think like it was Jay's house, and he didn't intend to move it around a lot. He wasn't camping in it. Right. He, he would move it from, you know, safe place to stay to safe place to stay. And yeah. And and the fact that it could be moved was sort of the the loophole that he or he found early on. Right. You know, that um, just by having wheels, all of a sudden certain building codes didn't apply. It wasn't real estate. It was, you know, it was a trailer and it wasn't even a trailer they really understood and it was it was something unusual and it was so attractive that it was you know it was uh, not frowned upon in the same way that that right. you know normal Living travel trailers so. yeah so i'm i'm curious um i just kind of have some questions just cuz you know you've designed so many tiny houses so many floor plans um and we we touched on that ladder as maybe a feature that is was almost a sacred cow of the tiny house design movement. And for anyone, I think that's a Seth Godin quote, you know, like what are the sacred cows? So I'm curious, what are some of the sacred cows of tiny house design that you see right now? Like, are, what are some ideas out there that you're, you're like, that you question in, in current tiny house design? Do you mean like current trends that are good or things that are bad? Or Well, yeah, I I guess I, I was I wanted to ask you like what are you most excited about right yeah. now in tiny house design? And then also, you know, what are some things that you think are ideas that are gonna go away? So let's see. I I've really enjoyed seeing people play more with the whole shape of the house. Mm -hmm. So there are so many shed roof house tiny houses, and there are now fewer gable roof houses. But there are there are a lot of people playing with, you know, asymmetric designs and, you know, where the it ha may have a pitch of or two pitches, but they're not centered on the house. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be, you know, an asymmetric design that's going front to back too. Yep. So I, I really like people. I, I like to see people playing with that. I also like to see, or I get excited about houses that can be towed. So when people are thinking lightweight, I think that. That while while a lot of people are getting comfortable with the idea of just parking it in one place and just planning on having it there forever, mm -hmm. I think there's a real benefit to to having the mobility because you know you can go where the work is or you can go where the weather is or you could go and and, and really embrace that that um, nomad option. So lightweight, lighter weight tiny houses. So like the last couple designs I posted on my blog were were on a even on a trailer that was that was had a, a much higher ground clearance and dually wheels uh, like a like a commercial trailer might uh -huh. and um, so that you could actually take it boondocking if you wanted to if you had the right kind of truck right and 
um, it, it didn't have a loft because once you get up that high in the air, you've kind of lost your headroom if you're going to stand your 13 six. Yeah. So it didn't have a loft, but, but it was very long and it could sleep, you know, four people easily. But it's fun thinking about imagining tiny houses that, that really can, can still go with you and, and take it places. It's not like an RV, but more like a, that nomad that, uh, yeah. that takes yeah. advantage of their freedom. Yeah, you've posted some really interesting ideas. Um, there's a there's a road trip Jeep hauling tiny house concept. So it's a house that actually you can drive your Jeep up onto the trailer and there's almost like a garage for the car. Yeah, it was like a a big porch. It's like a big yeah, almost closed in porch, but not entirely. But it was just long enough that you could park a Jeep up there with a couple of ramps. And uh and then has the rest of the house. Yeah. And I was just playing with the idea that, you know, well, it would be fun for, you know, a retired couple or, you know, a family with young kids to be able to go somewhere. And, you know, that dually, you know, crew cab pickup is not a good off-roader. Sure, they, they're four-wheel drive, but they're not, you know, if you're boondocking, you could get it there. But then if you wanted to go farther, mm-hmm. you know, you'd really need to get on some bikes or you'd need to get on a Jeep or something, you know, yeah. if you want to go farther into the wilderness or walk <laughs> i guess you could always do that yeah anyway so that was just about pushing pushing an idea an envelope idea kind of thing nice and then uh another one that i i wanted to ask you about is the mirrored tiny house what what inspired that so i am totally fascinated with mirrored houses and uh you see them every now and then on you know, Instagram or wherever. Mm-hmm. And they tend, at least in the photos, and I haven't seen one in person yet, but in photos, they disappear into the landscape. They become invisible, sort of. Yeah. Because it's like in a forest, they're reflecting the forest. And what I found when I was doing the renderings, when I was drawing those, it was so much fun. And I would put a, a, a scene around them, like, you know, um, like a landscape, photograph around them yep. and that landscape photograph would be mirrored in the in the walls of the rendering of the house and and even in the renderings they disappeared into the landscape they became part of the landscape and i i just think that would be fascinating so i actually been researching it quite a bit trying to figure out what the best material is and um, what i found in a nutshell is it's incredibly expensive if you want to mirror a house it has to be glass or some kind of polished metal or probably more likely a mirrored polycarbonate and uh and all those materials have their pros and cons like you know durability and whatnot yeah. driving down the highway and what kind of dings you would get in that if you were driving a giant mirror down the highway but shatter your mirrored house <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> wreak havoc but but it sure does seem like a neat idea and uh and i and what accidents it might cause on the highway too i yeah i i don't want to imagine but but it would be fun to, I think, to see one and to see one done. I, I know a couple mirrored tiny houses were built, like for jewelry companies. I think there's one down in Texas or something that uh-huh. that built one. And they're just cool, I think. So I, I wanted to play around with that. Too. And again, I like to draw, so I'm just drawing. Right. So do you start, when you're drawing, do you start on paper and then move to SketchUp? You know, uh, not anymore. Uh huh. So. When I was younger, like in college, it was all before computers were super Mm -hmm. uh, available. And so I always started on paper when I was drawing things. But but now with SketchUp, I I just, it's so much fun to draw in that because it's it's pretty easy to learn. You can use SketchUp free online if you don't want to pay the money for the software. Mm -hmm. I don't have the money because it is expensive. It's expensive now, yeah. Yeah. But SketchUp Free is pretty cool, and it does most of the things that the Pro version does. And it's in the it's in a web interface. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a little little quirkier than yeah. the, than the desktop version. But it's so nice to be able to just draw shapes and then you know you know move them around and change their shapes and cut into them. And and I like working in three D. So my my degree is in um, ceramics. I'm actually originally I was a potter. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I did take architecture in college, and then I 
decided that uh, at one point that if I'm going to finish this, I'm, I'm going to have to do something that I just really love, which was ceramic. So that's why I'm yeah. getting a BFA in ceramic and not continuing with the architecture thing. But uh, I, I always liked working in 3D arts. And so what's fun about SketchUp is even though it's on a computer screen, it's like working in 3D. So it's like, it's like sculpting. It's really you're interacting in a 3D world. So like, I don't think I'd like using AutoCAD or any of those CAD software. It's like, this just wouldn't be any fun. I think that'd be like a job. Okay. But SketchUp feels more like play. That's cool. Yeah, I've always, something that I've, I've kind of tried to learn SketchUp over the years. I've learned the basics, but I've never had reason to use them. Like I haven't, you know, done enough drawing in SketchUp to become really efficient at it. Um, but I've always appreciated realizing that even though it is obviously all on the computer and not real, that that SketchUp won't let you do anything that isn't physically possible in real in the real 3D world. That's right. You can't draw Escher in SketchUp. I don't. Right. Think. Exactly. I'd like to see somebody try. That'd yeah. Be cool, but... So like it it it's like a physical model kind of exists in bits and bytes on the computer and you can't defy the laws of, yep. of physics. It, although, if, and then a few years ago, oh, just to riff on that though. Yeah. But, but you can create things, physical things from your 3D drawing. So a couple of years ago, I was right. experimenting with making these little tiny house kits that you could, mm -hmm. that you could assemble as like a little model. Yep, and I would, yep. I would have them 3D printed, uh, my SketchUp drawings 3D printed, and you could actually have like a, you know, little wall sections that you could connect to other wall sections and little tiny house trailer and stuff. That didn't pan yeah. out, but it was sure a lot of fun to uh, to get in the mail. I, I don't have a 3D printer, but I would uh, have them printed and uh, get in the mail a box full of tiny house parts. And it was like a big kid with toys. Yeah, but, that is really cool. But it was it was fun seeing things that, that that I drew actually come to life like that. Yeah. Now, in these um, designs that you're doing, are you um, how what level of detail are you putting like inside the walls? Are you drawing out framing and everything, or are you is it just kind of a, a model? So I'm not I'm not doing a lot of framing drawing. Uh -huh. I was doing that for all the plans that I used to sell. Right. Of course, because people needed to, right. it was helpful for people to see where the studs went, things like that. Um, but I do take it into consideration. So the dimensions and, and like the, the placement of windows and doors over the, act, you know, what's over the axles, things like yeah. that. I'm still taking it into consideration from having all that experience drawing. But I also have done a couple of really detailed drawings about wall assemblies. Okay. And how the walls assembled. And to make sure that my wits that I was using in the drawings is, is always pretty accurate. Okay. And I, I'm not talking about the book so much, but in the drawings you'll see online, the 3D drawings. Right, right. Although in the book, still the same thing. It, uh, floor plan is never 100% to scale, but it's pretty darn to scale. I really tried to make sure that the wall widths and things like that were, were pretty accurate so that yeah. if, you, if you then wanted to take the next step and build one of these floor plans, um, you know, you, you shouldn't run into any problems. I'm sure, you know, you've been publishing tiny house plans since 2007. And especially when you were selling plans, I'm sure you've had the experience of somebody getting back in contact with you and, and having actually built a house. Oh, yeah. And actually, one of my readers from years back has been building a philo which was a 12 inch tiny house, really based on Jay's. Okay. Or 12 inch, 12, 12 foot. foot. Tiny house. <laughs> and yeah, 12 inch, that'd be really small. Yeah. <laughs> Eight square feet. And, uh, and he's still working on it and he's still finishing it up. Cool. And uh, he sends me updates every now and then. It's been years that he's been working on it, but that is really inspiring. It's also inspiring to go to like a um, tiny house exhibit at, uh, at a, like a home show or something when they have tiny houses there and see tiny houses that are very similar to tiny houses that I drew. And again, they're really the original, my original inspiration was 
that what I liked about what Jay did in the beginning mm -hmm. was he inspired people to to just imagine another way of living and and that inspired me so much that was what that was really the purpose of what I was trying to do with tiny house design was inspire people also to try something new to imagine something new and then try it yeah yeah because it, you know the the ramifications of going tiny and, and the freedom that it could bring people just was staggering to me. It just was, it, it just seemed so important. So I really felt like, you know, the designs I was putting out there for free and for, for pay was, you know, really my goal was to inspire people to build things. And so when I see them, even from designs that are in my books, like uh, 101 Tiny House, what uh, Tiny House Designs and then the original floor plans book and see people yeah. you know and, and i'm not saying well what i think is happening is they're just inspired by what they see just like they're inspired by what they see online and videos and mm -hmm. you know other what other people are doing and they they riff on it and they build something on top of that and they build it their own way yeah but i i just i love to see that you know that people are inspired the way i'm inspired and and uh, are taking it to the next level and and building their dreams. It's just really rewarding. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there a design? I, I, I don't want to make you pick your one favorite design in the book, although if you have one, I'd love to know it. But is there a sweet spot, like a size that is kind of your favorite to, to draw? So I don't really, I try not to have favorites. Okay. <laughs> that is a philosophical thing. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I don't know, I just... Everything and everyone has, has uh, you know, merits, right? But I think size-wise, I, I think I really have a, a love for really tiny, tiny houses, like Jay's, that, that mm -hmm. size. So, so 12 feet is, 12 footers. is a really great size, I think, especially for one person who's, who's really living a minimalist life. And like, for instance, um, Jay and Steve were still partners back, business partners back then. And uh, Kent Griswold and I did an interview in Jay's tiny house. And the cameraman had to stand outside and shoot inside through the window at us. But we were perfectly comfortable sitting there in Jay's living room talking. And, and we weren't too close. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too uncomfortable. It was, it was just right. And, and so I think that that size house for at least one person is fine. I think I like drawing though, probably like 32, 36 footers because I have two kids and, and one of them is a teenager. One's about to be a teenager and, and, um, and a dog. And so I can't, I'm not one person. Mm -hmm. I'm a family of four and a dog. <laughs> and yeah. so I, when I imagine tiny houses, I like to picture, well, what, what would I build for my family? And that's got to be bigger than 12 feet. Right. So I think that's the, so I, I really think the bigger ones are, it gives you a little bit more room and it doesn't, I don't think it, it adds on exponentially a lot of money to building, you know, like if you go from 24 to 36, I, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to, you know, totally break the bank to right. bump up that much but uh unless you start factoring in the truck because <laughs> yeah. you're talking about a seventy thousand dollar truck and that then you kind of broke the bank well yeah. new then we look at a used one but, but a big diesel dually is to pull a tiny house is a big investment so, so maybe tiny tiny is really better <laughs> for yeah for your freedom yeah i mean i start to when when you start looking at those trailers that are, you know, for a 30 foot tiny house and you're up over $10,000 for a trailer. Yeah. That's when I start to question the utility of, of even buying it on, or even building it on a trailer. Right. You know, I, I wonder, you know, could you find, buy some really cheap land somewhere, take that $10,000 and actually buy a piece of land. And I know that building a foundation is also really expensive. 
depending on where you are in the country and what kind of foundation you need to do. But, um, yeah, I, that's, that's my kind of cutoff point there. You're absolutely right. Right. So when you start, when you start getting toward even some of these houses that are professionally built that are around a hundred grand or more, yeah, you know, you really, I think when you're doing that, you really need to think about, well, why, why am I doing this and not just doing real estate? Because with real estate, there's still a risk of losing yeah. money, but there's, there's also a, a big possibility you're going to get paid back or you're going to make money on it. Right. Right. And, and so, and you're already probably talking about a mortgage either way, unless yep. you've got a huge savings that you can yep. dump into a tiny house. So, so I don't know at that point, I'm not a financial advisor, so I wouldn't be giving anybody financial advice in this way, but I, I do start to question really big tiny houses from mm -hmm. a, unless you're really talking about moving it around a lot, unless you're really talking about, and I guess that's why I'm fascinated with the whole lightweight thing is that if you could build a lightweight, big, tiny house, then you've got, you know, the best of both worlds. You are, or you could be nomadic mm -hmm. and really embrace that. And, and that's enough of a reason to say, yeah, I'm not going to put that money into real estate. I'm going to put that money into something that I can travel in. That's less money and less unattractive than a giant RV yeah, and more durable than a giant RV. Yeah. And I, that just is appealing to me to be able to, you know, think about really traveling, taking the family on the road and, and it just seems like a nice fantasy to be able to you know, hit the road, work for, you Definitely. know, I work from home anyway, so right. it doesn't really matter where I live. So I could theoretically live anywhere I wanted to and uh, right. at any time, as long as I had an internet. Yeah. So you, um, I want to ask you about a very old project and just, I, cause I, I actually, I remember reading about it, but then I don't remember what ended up happening, which is, um, your tiny free house. Yep. Um, it, it still exists. Well, can you tell us what yes. it, what it was or what <laughs> it is? Yeah. So the tiny free house was a project that I started right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea was, could I build a house for free? Uh huh only with stuff I found for free or found on Craigslist for free. Mm -hmm. Or if I, if I needed to buy something, could I find something that I could sell to recoup the money to, mm. to build it for free? Uh -huh. And so really the only thing, the only costly thing I would be putting into the house would be my time. And uh, so I got started. I got a free trailer and I wasn't in very good shape. In hindsight, I probably should have worked on that trailer quite a bit before I started building on it, but I started building it. Uh -huh. And I was building it out of pallets. Literally, I didn't just take, the, I didn't take the pallets apart. I just started building it out of pallets and I would yep. cut the pallets down a little bit, yep. screw them all together. And I got as far as putting the siding on and the roof on. And it's, it's, uh, and I was building it at my wife's parents' family farm. Mm -hmm. And then about that time, my wife's health started taking a downturn and has continued mm -hmm. to be that way. She's been uh, growing chronically more ill since for about 10, 11 years now. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to continue going up there to fix it or to work on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And so I just put a pin in it and I, I figured I'd get back to this when she was feeling better. Mm -hmm. And that just hasn't happened. And And now I think looking back, um, so, and I did, I had built it for free, essentially there, there was a little bit of money that went into the roofing panels, Okay. but, but I, I, I think I could, I could e easily have paid for that by the stuff that I had collected. Like I, I had found a free refrigerator. I had found, I found some free stuff and I could have just sold that and paid it off. So I think yeah. in theory, it would work if you had a lot of time and a place that you could build it didn't cost you money you could and you had a little pickup you could drive around town and pick up free stuff in and you lived in a i live near sacramento so there's plenty of stuff around yeah for free i think somebody could do that and i think you could build a free tiny house uh, but it would take an incredible amount of work i would not recommend building it out of pallets <laughs> uh, because you're really relying on the fasteners to hold the thing together yeah not so much the lumber to hold it together um, the house is still standing 
I think my father-in-law plans to use it as a chicken coop someday, but right now it's just sitting there at the family farm still weathering. Okay. It has not fallen down, which has really surprised me. <laughs> and, uh, and just because it's, it's, you know, hasn't been messed with for a long time. Right. Right. And, uh, but it was fun to get started on. It was fun to build. And, uh, and, oh, and the other thing I think I learned was that uh, I would always start spending a lot more time on the foundation, on the trailer. And, yeah. and like this one, this one needed new axles probably and some beefed up suspension, stuff like that. So like a free trailer is free a free trailer. That's pretty cool. It is, but, but it, is it worth the them. price? It's, it is. It's probably worth the cost, the price. Yeah. And if yeah. you're good at working in metal and you can weld yeah. and stuff, I, I yeah. think, you know, and, and you're handy, I think you could do it. Yeah. But or there's but the demo, demolish a, a, a you know a defunct travel yeah. trailer is the other option. Yeah, a lot of people used to do that back then, right? They would yeah. they would get an old travel trailer for free because people are trying to get rid of it. They demolish yeah. it, haul off the waste, and then beef up the the trailer. Yeah, but I think most people found that you really had to beef up that the suspension because travel trailers are so light, right. tiny houses are so heavy. Right, and and that's why. So like these days, if I were to build a tiny house. And of course, I would want one that could travel. I I would have it custom built right? because and just put the put money good money into the trailer, and and be a little more frugal with the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. But the tra the trailer I think is just so important because it's it's the foundation, just like on any house or any building, yeah, or anything that you build, a fence even. The the what's touching the ground is you know if it's not solid. It, your thing's going to fall down right eventually right. so fascinating but anyway that's what happened to the tiny free house okay i also had a design way back then called nine tiny feet and I, I really wanted to build it it was a nine square foot tiny house and uh, i never built it but it would have been the easiest thing to build because it was so small and i got the nine from i i imagined uh, how many square foot I took up laying down on the ground. So I'm six feet tall, six one. Okay. And, and so I just figured, <laughs> well, I would need at least nine square feet, you know, to lay down and sleep. So how could I build and design a tiny house around that? That's very. And that was more of a design, you know, experimentation that never happened to be built. But, but I think it's just fun to play with ideas. So <laughs> You know, extreme ideas like that, and I, those yeah. two ideas were born at the same time. That's why. Yeah, I think that from those those ideas, you can learn a lot. Like you can learn that working with pallets is, you know, not maybe not worth the effort. You know, we spoke. Uh, I just looked it up. You know, you were you were episode seven on this podcast, and now we're in. By the time this comes out, we'll be in the one seventies. So it's been every wow. every Friday for three years. You know, when we spoke, one of the questions that I asked you is kind of like, is tiny a fad or is it sticking around? And I think that I, I think you said it's sticking around. Um, and, you know, and certainly time has has borne that out. Like, there's no question to me that that tiny is sticking around. Um, I'm curious, you know, as somebody who's observed since 2007 or, or even before and been involved. What do you see, you know, what do you see the next, let's see, 2007 to now is almost 15 years. What do you see in the next 15 years? Well, I sure hope we see legalization. Yeah. Like broad legalization. We've seen a lot of progress, but, but I don't think we've seen enough like landmark cases where, you know, they're really embraced. Yeah. And I, even more so than the, you know, embracing them as a travel trailer, uh, because I think that's happened more than mm -hmm. than not, and that kind of makes sense because it's a, you know, it's a house on wheels like a travel trailer, right? But it's so much more than that because it's built like a house, so it it really should fall into its own special category. Yeah, we've seen park model RVs now; those were around already, and uh, and so tiny houses sort of fit into those rules those are not codes it's a more like an industry standard mm -hmm. that the industry sets the park model industry sets. but i i really would like to see it you know 
and I, I'm not even sure who would who would give the stamp of approval if it's you know cities, municipalities, building code departments, mm -hmm. or if it's really at the code level, because it's it, it's I think it's kind of difficult for the building code people to really stick it in there so much because it's it's not a, it's a building but it's a building that's transportable so it does it fall into a highway you know under highways right or it right fall? it's in this it's still in a gray area we've also seen the explosion of van life and and other alternative housing take off and i i sort of suspect where this is headed is where it's really headed is uh, more of an explosion in the direction of just alternative housing that the tiny houses at, like they did in the beginning acted as a catalyst for people to to question their values and and their goals and and, right. and what they think of um, when they think of a house and and i think that's continued to catalyze things like like the van life movement the van lives mm -hmm. van uh, you know van builds we see so many of them on youtube in Instagram are very, they're tiny houses. They're building yeah. tiny houses inside of van. And, you know, with the, they're not even like RVs. I mean, they're, they're better than RVs, a lot of yeah. them. And yeah. they're really more like tiny houses. And, and so we've seen that. And I bet we see more like that, like more um, experimentation in alternative architecture that pushes it pushes all sorts of limits on what's legal, environmental uh, issues, on you know, sustainability, yeah. uh, cost. Uh, you know how, how you know, can we build things cheaper, more affordable? Um, can we build things in more extreme places, or places we didn't think we could build before? And so I I sort of expect that as people's minds begin to open, and like tiny houses helped open them. Mm -hmm that that they'll continue to open and people will will continue to think differently about what a house is and will begin embracing like so many people are with this whole van life thing are they're really embracing this alternative lifestyle and finding that it works for them and um and i really kind of hope more and more people do that because i think they're headed in the right direction of, you know less debt is more freedom and more mobility is more freedom and yep. in, yep. A, in a more filling life if you can you know travel to like more places see more things meet yep. more people and you know have more experiences i think that's living life to the fullest not sitting at a desk job you know cranking away a conference call right and, <laughs> and you know and, and taking their very fat paycheck and then paying your bills with it I, I yeah. don't think that's freedom. I think that's, you know, that's something else. Like being the opposite. Right, right. Whereas living in a van cheap or living in a tiny house, you know, cheap is, or at least well within your means, is way closer to finding happiness and freedom than, you know, the what the status quo would tell us. Sure, yeah. Well, Michael Jansen, thank you so much for, for your time today. And, uh, you know, I encourage everyone listening to, you know, go over to Amazon and, and pick up a copy of Tiny House Floor Plans, second edition. Um, you know, it's just any size that you want from 12 to, to 36. There are a lot of designs in there and, um, you know, a lot to get inspired by and, and just see, you know, just seeing them out on paper gives you a sense of how how the house will kind of flow. And I, I kind of, you know, the, the small ones, the 12-foot tiny houses are almost like a sheet of paper, 8 by 12, whereas the, the 36 ones are like a receipt. It's like a long scroll. It can kind of give you a sense of, of the scale of a house like that. But anyhow, I'm rambling. Uh, Michael Jansen, thank you so much. Thanks, Ian. It's been fun. Thank you so much to Michael Jansen for being a guest on the show today. You can find the show notes, including a full transcript, links to Michael's books, and more at thetinyhouse.net slash 171. Again, that's thetinyhouse.net slash 171. Well, that's all for this week. I'm your host, Ethan Waldman, and I'll be back next week with another episode of the Tiny House Lifestyle Podcast.